Welcome to All Things in the Name of Love. If you like this show, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks. Welcome to another episode of All Things in the Name of Love. And today I have with me a beautiful soul named Mary Gina. And she reached out to me because she does this beautiful awareness of how to live without sugar. And in my awareness um, and my journey, I the first time I gave up sugar took me three years. Um, then I went to like, oh, well, coconut sugar is better for me and honey is better for me. And then my body was like, no. And so I recently just went on keto and I'm watching the, ba- the internal battle because of the addiction of the sugars. So um, I would love to hear how you started this journey and what you've seen as a result of this amazing detox. (laughs) Well, uh, you know, I've been working as a weight loss coach for quite a while. Okay. And I started that part of the business because I was huge, you know, like 70 pounds more than I have now. Okay. And that was a long time ago. Um, it was after my pregnancy where I had to stay in bed and basically what I did, I was eating because that was the only thing that nobody told me you shouldn't do that, right? <laughs> it was just lying down, waiting for nine months to pass. <laughs> oh, wow, that's intense. So my kind of, you know, understanding was, okay, I'll get rid of it once, you know, when the baby is born mm-hmm. because I had miscarriages before, so I had to be in bed all the mm-hmm. time. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So I put a lot of weight and it took me a very long time to lose that weight. And on the journey, trying you know, to be on a diet, off a diet, exercise more, blah, all the stuff that we probably, most of us tried, didn't work. Mm-hmm. And then I figured out that actually you have to think about nutrition, but also about mind. So connecting mind and body was mm-hmm. the key for me to start finding the way. And I've lost mm-hmm. the weight about 20 years ago and you know I'm kind of in this kind of size of body for Mm -hmm. for a long time and I started sharing that with people and helping them using as I said nutrition EFT mindfulness a lot of different things to put together because it's really not that easy no a lot of people think oh if if they see somebody you know when somebody is big like they're lazy, they don't have a willpower. And it's not about that at all. Mm -mm. Never, ever is that the reason. And the part about sugar, one of the things that I did was um, after a while when keto became very popular, I was trained as a keto coach as well. And I started teaching people to do that. And I realized it's so hard for people to be in, uh, in ketosis. It's just hard. It's a very limited diet. Mm -hmm. And in order to help them, I was starting to think if we take the sugar out, that would be interesting. That was one reason. But even more for me, the whole thing about understanding how actually sugar is bad is me getting cancer. Oh, wow. And even though I've been eating healthy, yeah, for a very, very long time, and most people I know would say that, you know, I am having a really healthy lifestyle for a very long time. And Mm -hmm. I've got bowel cancer, which is connected with food. Yeah. And like, how is that possible? Right? And what I discovered is that I was actually taking more carbs than I would actually should for this body. Right? Mm -hmm. So there is no one size fits all. Right. And for my my kind of thing, because it, it actually started with insulin resistance, then I discovered that And then the journey is cut the story short. It's all, when you take the sugar out, so many things changed. Mm -hmm. So basically those two reasons to help people to get into ketosis. And with my research, how to stay away from cancer, it was all the research was just pointing back that, you know, I really have to stay on a very low carb diet, Mm -hmm. meaning less sugar, Mm -hmm. even honey, but this body, honey is not good, right? Yeah. And what is a really important part is that we all have our journeys. And I teach people 
to listen. Mindfulness is the key point mm -hmm. in my work with people. Because what's healthy for me doesn't have to be healthy for you. Right. And when you learn, learn to listen, you know, body always give you feedback. Yes. If you're there to listen. Yes, it definitely does. It definitely does. Mine, I've watched myself because I bought all the food for keto this weekend and I've watched the rebellion. Um, but there's part of me that's like, something about 20 grams of carbs a day feels so restrictive to me. So I'm doing- And it is. It is. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking like 40 or 50, which means I'm still being mindful of what I'm eating. I'm actually like paying attention to what I'm taking in, but I'm also not starving myself because when I starve myself, I did this once before, I did two days of 20 carbs and then I gorged and then I got sick for three days. So, you know what? I've seen that problem so many times. Mm -hmm. And that's why I made an online course called Sugar Free in 28 Days. Mm. So, if you take just the sugar out, just mm -hmm. sugar, mm -hmm. meaning not going into ketosis, it's for you not to be the goal to go into ketosis, just to take the sugar out. Right. And there is a whole step-by-step -step process in my program mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that makes the whole thing very easy and yeah. what i could tell you is that most people when they go through the month of that in order to prepare themselves for for keto diet they don't need it because they right. are losing weight they're feeling good and it's so much easier to just let go of sugar right and balancing it in a different way mm -hmm. so what i could promise you the steps that I, that I created to take people through is just so simple. You suffer for about between five and days, days, 10 days okay. in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you start feeling better. And when you start feeling better, it's much easier to have the support from the body. You know, body right. is not complaining anymore. Right. And then, you know, you gradually let go of your power completely. Mm -hmm. You know, most of my clients who work with me, come to the point when they see the owner, they feel sick, like, uh, you know, croissants, mm -hmm. uh, that's not food, that just looks like food. Mm -hmm. I used to love it, but I hate it now. Right. So it's really not about willpower. It's about showing the body how to get of the addiction. Mm -hmm. And once when you're out of that, there are steps to support to, for support, but mm -hmm. in general, on average three months with me and people are just free forever that makes sense it totally makes sense because like one of i i for 10 years um after eight years of of um removing these foods i was plant-based plant-based gluten dairy and sugar-free and then in april of last year um i tuned into myself and i heard that i had adrenal fatigue so i started taking taking desiccated liver pills and bone beef bone broth. And I started eating beef after 10 years and it wasn't a lot, but it was like enough for my body to be like, Ooh, I needed this. And the old way of eating kind of fell away. And then I also got taught sourdough bread making, and that was my downfall. <laughs> but, but what I've seen is because I've been eating like, beef and fish no poultry or pork for some reason but beef and fish seem to be aligned for me um i have more energy i have more i have better digestion and the hardest part was like going from that diet back to eating beef again the identity how the ego attaches to food as a way of identifying who we are. It's one of the most fascinating things because when I gave up, when I way back when, when I, I did the last thing where my body was like, okay, no fish. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't even believe, I mean, it was much more dramatic than this, but like I had a full on five-year-old temper tantrum. I was like, what am I going to eat? There's nothing I can eat. I can't eat anything. I can't even believe this. Blah, 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 blah. Because, like, it was like this holding on to this one thing of normalcy 
I could still eat fish. And somehow that, that was like, I don't know. It was like when I couldn't for a while, like it just crumbled me. I was so devastated that, that I had to I give up this understanding of what I thought I was. And so I want to talk to that aspect of the food addiction because that's a huge part, like how we identify ourselves through how we eat. And you see, it's one of the mind games, mm -hmm. right? It's, you know, I call it a food fundamentalism because, you know, some people are just like, oh, keto or just plant-based or carnivore. But we are designed to kind of flow through different things. You know, we came to this world eating all of those foods and some people try eating just one, but it's limited. Yeah. And it's so okay if your body is starting screaming for it. It's really very fine line to see where is the addiction and, and you are actually, your mind is playing games with you and where is your body screaming for something that your body needs. I try to be... Uh, vegetarian many years ago mm -hmm. and I could hardly move I was so tired mm -hmm. I just couldn't go with that and you know for after two years I had to give up because it just felt horrible and I talked to a naturopath and the lady said you are just not designed for that mm -hmm. you have to let it go and the thing is what I'm eating now I need small amount of meat very mm -hmm. small my plate is a lot of veggies mm -hmm. and like tiny piece of meat, mm -hmm. but that's just enough for me. And mm -hmm. I also have vegan days, like three times a week. I don't touch anything, uh, you know, any meat or dairy. There, I don't eat dairy anyways, mm -hmm. uh, and no gluten. And and it's kind of like listening what the body wants. Right. And there are times I feel, wow, I need, I need a whole week without touching anything. And you, it's just the feeling in my stomach, like. I feel like my body is rejecting something mm -hmm. and then, you know, I try to follow. But if I stay for, for longer, I start feeling weak and tired and it's really a way of, of learning to hear your body. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing like working with your emotions. Very yeah. often we eat to either cover up emotions or to bring emotions up that we don't feel. Like, you know, eating right. chocolate, you feel good, <laughs> right? So. <laughs> <laughs> it's body is clever but the thing is that uh, learning the principles of how to hear mm -hmm. um you know something for example that we've been through recently christmas and celebration and eating mm -hmm. too much of everything um what i usually advise people to do is you want to be with your family and you want to share and if you make a decision up front that you're going to eat all of that slow down enjoy don't need the guilt with the food just food mm -hmm. and when you feel it's enough you stop because if you're really listening usually what what is very very common to do when you're eating something you think you shouldn't you eat fast and you kind of like you know let's just eat it and then feel like oh i've done it yep. again oh i'm an idiot blah 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 right yeah if you instead of that say well i really want to go for this cake it's not good, but I want to. And I'm going to really enjoy the flavor, the smell, whatever, you know, is there that you like. Mm -hmm. And if you do that mindfully, usually after two bites, first one is like heaven. Mm -hmm. Second one is okay. And then you don't want it. Or right. what I've seen with my clients many times, when they stop eating sugar and then like two months later, they go for, for their favorite, what, used to be their favorite mm -hmm. uh thing and like yes i'm going to and then it's like oh i feel <laughs> sick i can't i can't touch it it's horrible and you know what's wonderful about that if you have that kind of response mm -hmm. you don't want that ever again done. right You're done. right my so, my christmas journey has been so my grandma made cookies like scores and scores of cookies and one of them is her gingerbread cookie. And I love that cookie. I haven't had it in 10 years because when I went gluten, dairy, sugar free, I had to completely revamp the recipe because it was all of that, like molasses and brown sugar. Yeah. 
and all the things. And, and so two years ago, I finally made the dough, but I still couldn't bring myself to rolling it out because it was like, so it was like a family recipe and I just kind of butchered it. And, and it was just so amusing because like after that, yeah, I kind of miss it, but I can make, I can make like tea with ginger or I could even make like a, a gingerbread dairy-free gluten-free cake and I'll still get the flavor as I use you know, syrup. if you just change the word your mind is going to be different for example the way I deal with that I would say I will improve the recipe mm. and when you think and you say mm -hmm. I'm improving it you don't feel bad about it. You actually feel great. Now, this could be a healthy recipe. It's just I need to play a little bit to make that to be with ingredients that are good for me. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I hardly ever touch dairy. Let's say for me, it's a treat, like once in a blue mm -hmm. moon. Uh, so very rarely I would use it. There, are, there is a replacement. I usually use coconut oil where I would use butter before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I use butter, but I, you know, I, I don't eat cheese or, or I don't touch milk mm -hmm. ever. Milk is really horrible for my body. But again, yeah. I learned that. So milk yep. is definitely, I didn't touch milk for probably for 20 years. And then there are sugar replacements that are healthy and there are sugar replacements that are unhealthy. Yeah. So you go with the healthy options. Mm -hmm. You know, you use stevia or um, monk fruit or something that mm -hmm. is healthy replacement. Yep. And then you have a new recipe with wonderful flavors. And for example, if you use stevia, which is really kind of that bad aftertaste. Yeah. It's all about adding other flavors like cinnamon or nutmeg mm -hmm. or something that you like or vanilla mm -hmm. that covers that, mm -hmm. that you don't have that um, um, smell or, or taste bitterness. that you don't yeah. like. Yeah. But it's a it's a game that you play until you get the right one. And I'm mm -hmm. using almond flour and coconut flour a lot. Mm -hmm. And those are kind of my stuff. So basically what I'm saying, I'm still making desserts. I'm mm -hmm. making really wonderful chocolate. That It's very expensive because I buy the product from professionals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I'm melting that chocolate into mm -hmm. something I like with no sugar. Right. It's dark chocolate. And my son who... It, you know, was a chocolate addict. He's like, mom, your chocolate is better. And what I'm trying to say, I didn't try to make it perfect or make a product from that. And mm -hmm. it has to be in the fridge because otherwise melting. I made right. it very simple. But the taste is really, really great. Mm -hmm. And then we eat chocolate. So we didn't give up yeah. chocolate because, you know, right. cacao is great and healthy. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say, you don't have to give desserts forever. Right. There are options that you you can do that, but at the same time, it's working with your mind. You know, why yeah. are you going for dessert? Do you do you really are, do you feel sad and you want to lift yourself up? It's really working mm -hmm. with with your soul. You know, yeah. food is not just just about food. It's about what's going on with us in life. Mm -hmm. You know, my my teacher Mark David, I studied psychology of eating with him. He said. Uh, something uh, like uh, our relationship with food shows actually our relationship with the world mm. right so it's yep. kind of we we just talk to that food, food is so important you can't hate oh, yeah. food it, it's just oh you know, I love food <laughs> me too me too and I love cooking and you know mm -hmm. but it's kind of when you take something that really works for your body you feel better you yeah. you feel good you know, oh, I can. A, I definitely that feel the difference. Yeah, yeah. It's. I really don't want people who work with me to stop lo loving food. We enjoy, you know, food is pleasure and it should be. Mm -hmm. oh, just I love that. How you how you relate to that understanding? Yeah, because yeah, like unpacking all of the. Ah. <sighs> the beliefs and the programs of, of, and the comforts, you know, like for me, um, whenever I move and I, I house sat for a week and a half. So that to, to me, in my mind, that's a move because I left and then I came back. My body wants to feel safe and safe happens to be like 
carbs. <laughs> And well, comfort, so usually, you know, go, it goes with comfort. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, it's about maybe not safety. If you go a layer deeper, maybe you don't feel you need a hug or something. That's when yeah. you go for hug. You yeah. need a friend. You need love. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the thing. Uh, when you uh, don't feel safe, it's hardly ever about food. Sorry for for right, right. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Experience. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you have one layer, and that's the first thing that happens, and mm -hmm. then you sit with that, and like, is this true? You know, is that really true that it's about safety? And then you just kind of sink into deeper layer. Yeah. And God knows, it could be sadness underneath. It could be right. God knows what something that happened to you when you were little. Right. You know, I used to have, uh, um, I was crazy about ice cream for quite a while. And then when I was practicing EFT with one of my colleagues, we kind of, let's go and, and explore that. Mm -hmm. And we found out that actually when I was little, my parents got divorced and uh, what was very special thing for my father, me and my sister is to go to that special place where the ice cream was wonderful mm -hmm. and basically what was the whole story I mean connected love with ice cream so whenever I was feeling that I need more love or I'm not loved ice cream would be the thing that would mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. simply come to me and in that session when we discovered that when I you know literally in my brain put love in one drawer <laughs> and ice cream in the other I still being obsessed with you know it's just gone yeah. yep it's not oh, that totally I hate ice sense. cream now, you know, ice cream seems nice anytime I, I think about it. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. to have a ice cream that doesn't have all the ingredients that I don't eat, it's complicated. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I would hardly touch it. Right. But if I go for it, I love the taste, mm -hmm. but I'm not addicted. Yeah, that totally Addiction. makes sense. Yeah, go on. Yeah, because if, for me, what I've seen is like addictions are a coping mechanism yeah. to oh, oh. to keep the little one in a space of love like and to just you know okay you're fine everything's good this is good for you like take care of yourself right now and when we unpack that um because i for decades of <laughs> of mastering distractions um, until I started doing my own deep inner work of like, okay, now I see myself distracting myself. Okay, I, I'm honoring that part of me that needs to be distracted. And I'm aware of the fact that there's gonna be a time limit to the distraction because clearly there's something within me that needs to be sat with because I'm distracting myself. So that awareness of, okay, here's a little part of me that needs comfort right now with this distraction. If it's food, if it's phone, if it's whatever it is, um, just being aware of it and, and allowing not cutting it off, like some sort of, uh, tyrant saying, no, you can't do that. But like just saying, okay, yeah, you can do this for a little while. And I'm just going to bring you back here because this is the part where you need to be present with yourself. Yeah, that's perfect. Well done. Yeah, because, yep. you know, if we don't sit with our emotions, they're not going to go away. They will come up stronger next time, right? I know this firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so simple to say, but to practice it, it's a completely different thing, right? It's a thing. It's a thing. Like, there are different levels. Like, you know, so, like, for example, for me, like, I'll watch a video of uh, Orca, which I call Quella Mission, which is their Native American name. And, and I'll just see it and I'll just burst into tears of joy because they're magical creatures to me. So that's an easy thing of just like expressing the feelings. If it's something that's like a deep thing that um, that's a part of my subconscious that I hadn't seen before and like I'm, I'm in the process of unwinding one right now, it just takes time 
And so I'll be present with it when I feel it. And when I'm done feeling it, I know there's more because it hasn't fully released and that's okay too. Wonderful. That is yeah. so nice. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's you know, compassion and patience mm -hmm. are really the key. Yeah. To, to be free one day. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. And, and knowing that like this journey of, of intuitive eating, which I feel is what you're teaching people how to remember. Um, yeah. it, it requires both. Absolutely. Absolutely. And courage, you know, you really need to, to, to know that it's not easy to, to sit with those feelings, mm -hmm. but if you don't, it gets worse. Oh yeah. And the reason to do it is because, you know, one, you want to feel better and suffer less. So mm -hmm. if you start sitting with that in a little tiny pieces, you don't have to go into deep down stuff every yeah. time. It could be the amount you can cope with in this moment in time. Mm -hmm. and just kind of release it. And one of the things that is really inspiring for me is not to pass it to my kids because if i deal with that mm -hmm. it's finished with me yeah and you know you and imagine all the stuff that we are carrying from our ancestors so i really want to work with me in order to to help my kids not have the same thing mm -hmm. and that that's because you know we love them a lot and that that's a good inspiration i think for all of us oh yeah let's with me <laughs> let's suffer you know less i you know, had i had that. i had an awareness when i was 10 that i wasn't going to have any children because i didn't want to bring the ancestral stuff forward i knew i was like the end of the line and i made a conscious decision i like i don't know how brilliant my, my 10 year old was amazing uh, she had so many awarenesses but this one was like there's a lot of stuff for my ancestors and i just felt it and i don't want to pass this along to anyone so for me, my journey has been like, okay, I'm just going to clear all the ancestral stuff. And I know I'm not carrying it forward because I'm too old now to have children. Um, but that was my own journey because I had that level of awareness of how many things I signed up for before I incarnated. Yeah. Well, that's really beautiful and so nice of you. Thank you. Yeah. And, and being aware so young. That's amazing. I never heard of amazing. She she has like my little girl astral traveled and and uh was very connected with my spiritual self and then disconnected at 10 when my grandpa died and I unpacked that again over the past 40 something years. Um because like I wasn't ready to be spiritual in the 1970s in small town connecticut like it, it didn't work because i didn't have anyone to relate with but i've always known that there's something more in life than what the 3d is oh i completely understand you you know i grew up in socialist country so imagine like, wow no gods or churches or and i felt so different than you know just not fitting in because I felt that there is something more than that. It's just that kind of uh, intuition and, and connection and feeling that there is more than that was so complicated for me. And then, yeah. you know, when we moved to England and I felt so good, you know, and I live near Brighton where a lot of weird people are living. So I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful because like, I don't know, like, I, I love where I grew up. I love my family. I think they're amazing. And I always felt like I was so different. I didn't have language to communicate how I felt when I was little. And I've been able to develop that language. And I, I turned to language of quantum physics and frequency and resonance because that makes sense to me um, to understand how i am now um which is really beautiful um but it has been quite a journey of 
how do I say it? So, so there was when I when I started remembering, I was like, okay, here's my spirit self, and here's the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and as that that became very apparent that there was no separation between that, um, I was able to see more of the aspects of me that I was hiding. And I know that that's a massive part of how we remember and really catching those shadow as the, I think for me, the easiest way to catch the shadow aspects of me is watching how I eat. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Tell me more about that. Well, okay. So for example, like this weekend, I like, buckle down and I get all the healthy things for for like cutting my carbs and so because I was house sitting somewhere else and I come back I didn't factor in the decompression between the two so part of me was like okay I know this is going to happen so I got like a big container of chocolate covered pretzels that's like my weakness I have like three left and that was on, fr I went shopping on Friday and today is Tuesday. And I mean, I pretty good. I like, I didn't eat the whole thing in one day, but then I also had tortilla chips and I have had popcorn. And I'm like, interesting that like, this is just, <laughs> I'm just being aware of it and, and watching it and going, okay, okay. You, you've overstepped now. I did one day of fasting. So that was part of it too. It was like, my body's like, I need stuff to eat. So I get that, but but it's just fascinating to see like what I'm doing, like and where I am in that moment. Oh, okay. You were stressed out. You had a comfort food. Great. I see that. Perfect. I love that. Now you want salt. So you're going to go for tortilla chips. Hmm. That's not really the healthiest choice, but it's the choice you have. So don't eat many. So it's this whole balance of like understanding the 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 unconscious way of eating and bringing awareness into that. That's really good. Absolutely. You know, that's what I usually uh, do with clients to, mm -hmm. to make connections because you need to find your triggers. And yeah. when you learn your triggers, you can, you know, step and think about it. And there are many techniques that I teach people to use in the moment because, you know, Sometimes it's just about stopping yourself not to go in the moment and then five minutes later, you don't want it anymore, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's kind of, there are ways not to go for it immediately. Right. Uh, and then you can just sit back and say, okay, what was that? Mm -hmm. What actually led me to this moment? Let's go a few steps back and maybe a little bit long, you know, right. further back and just see and then make connections with usually is the trigger it is the trigger but something deeper happened you know right a few years back maybe many years back mm -hmm. but it's kind of making those connections and then when you know your triggers before you even feel it you know it's coming mm -hmm. and then befriend them right it's not about stopping yourself to do things that are going to trigger you it's right. more like understanding and then this is like a post sign to show you what what was before mm -hmm. what was painful maybe and just you know relive it you can you can have a better childhood memory just going there you know you can just go there and change it you know anytime yeah. we go to a memory you change it anyway people mm -hmm. very often don't know that anytime you think about something that happened to you you change it a bit mm -hmm. and then if it's if that is happening anyway why don't you go and change it really go deeper into it and you know make it make it some in a way that you can understand bringing yourself today to that moment when you were little and didn't have any resources mm -hmm. and then you can bring all of that and and you know you can let it go there are many ways of doing that yeah i love EFT or, or havening but it, it doesn't have to be that it's more mm -hmm. about going there and understanding with you today i love that work with the parts because you know there is always something important to understand that there is a part, for example, that wants to eat ice cream, popcorn, whatever, but there is another part who doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. And you can make them talk. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there are another five of you. It's not that only people who are mentally ill have parts. We all have them. 
and we talk to ourselves yep. all the time. Yep. It's just one thing is they talk without you having any influence or saying, okay, I'm, I want you to talk. Mm-hmm. And you bring the part to say whatever the part wants. It's, it's a more or less, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with IFS, Internal Family Systems. Mm. Uh, the sports develop the whole, the whole thing about that. But basically what that means, we have parts, and if you make them talk, there is some kind of main self who can say, let's say, imagine I'm a manager, the main one, mm-hmm. and I let the team talk, and then let's make a decision what's going to happen. And you mm-hmm. thank every part. Because mm-hmm. every part does something to protect you. There is mm-hmm. no part of you that wants something bad for you. Right. It's just that each one of them are thinking, I know better than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. I definitely, that's then, beautiful. Yeah. When you thank them all and say, okay, you can relax and go and play, you know, I heard you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's enough. Sometimes you need a little bit more to dig. Mm-hmm. But in any case, when you recognize the voice, it's similar like, you know, when we sometimes we just want somebody to be here for us and hear mm-hmm. us. You don't want advice always, you know, it, but you want somebody to be with you. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. could be a very similar experience. No, I agree. I had an experience a few months ago where I had to, um, I had to do something I wasn't really interested in doing. And um, I drove to the place and I set up my little girl who is actively fighting me because didn't want to do it. Um, I put her in the back of the car. I gave her coloring books. I gave her snacks. I gave her a teddy bear. I gave her blankets. I said, okay, honey, I hear you. I love you so much. I know you don't want to do this here. You're going to be here. The adult me is going to go in and do the thing I don't want to do. And then as a treat for being so good and letting me do this, I'm going to get you a chocolate. And then she wanted two, and then I got sick because I got two. <laughs> but, but like, <laughs> but having that awareness of like, oh, there's an aspect of me that is like literally kicking and screaming for me not to do this thing, and recognizing her, and loving her, and setting her up so she knows she's comfy and you know like has all the things she could possibly need, so I can go do the thing. Um, it was amazing because I I was able to not have that aspect of me trying to get in the way of what I needed to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when you stop that voice, it comes back again. Mm -hmm. And if you let that part of you speak to you and maybe have a conversation and ask her what is she scared about, why Mm -hmm. she doesn't want it, what's what's behind the whole thing, maybe you can convince her to change her mind. Oh, I... I, I did after I actually knew what it was beforehand too. And I was like, okay, I know your, your stuff and I see it and we're going to talk about this later, but right now, because you're in the middle of this and I have to do this, that's why I put her aside. And then I had a conversation with her later because she was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I love you dearly. We've got to do it anyways. We're going to have a conversation after. And, and she's so much better about it now because I saw her and I honored her. Perfect. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. It's a thing, you know, like this, this gift of life and unpacking all of the layers that we have is so fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree 100%. So, is there anything else you would like to share? Well, you know, life is very short and I really, you know, want everybody to enjoy. And there is a way really to eat and enjoy food and and make it healthy. It doesn't have to be that we enjoy only when we eat wrong food, you know, Mm -hmm. food that is unhealthy. Mm-hmm. I, I remember my my one of my clients said, "Well, everything that is nice is forbidden, but <laughs> it, it's not really like that. And sometimes it's about changing the language. Language mm-hmm. is so powerful, mm-hmm. really. Like I told you, if you say improving the recipe rather yeah. than feeling, oh, you're, I can't eat that, 
Mm -hmm. Well, let's see how I could make something that is important for me and I want to have some kind of dessert. Uh, let's work on it. It doesn't mm -hmm. have, you know, it's not about being forbidden and then you don't go there. Right. Some people think like that, you know, there are people uh, who are addicts mm -hmm. and they can't touch it. Right. You know, uh, I recently read some uh, some research that says about a third of us are really addicts. And if we touch sugar, we go crazy and we can't stop it. Those people, you know, have to behave like alcoholic or drug addict. They can't touch it. Right. There is another third that could go with that, but have to be very careful because if you overstep it, then it becomes a huge problem to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of in that zone. If I would eat something sugary first time, I feel horrible. But then in three days, I start liking it. And then if I need to go off that, I really need to suffer. It's really like, you know, getting off the drug kind mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. thing. But if I'm just trying, like, I'm having something that is sweet today, and then, then I go back to normal, you know, not eating it, I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. But I can't do it three days in a row. I that mean, makes sense. Then I have a, then I have a problem. Mm -hmm. And there are, you know, another group of people who can just eat whatever they want, and they then they just don't have any issues. And that it's all about, brain. <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with willpower. It's mm -hmm. all about the brain and, mm -hmm. and part of the brain that is about addiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's all about that. Nothing to, you know, all of those people who are trying hard and not having results. Right. Are usually because they're trying to do everything using willpower. And willpower yeah. is not the tool. No, it's just not, that is not like, helpful at all. You know, like using your own key uh, and trying to open the door of neighbors, you know, your neighbor's door. You can't. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not working. So using willpower uh, in order to, to achieve, you know, good relationship with food is definitely the wrong oh, key. Right. It definitely is because it just, it just gets you frustrated with yourself. Exactly. You just feel horrible. Right. It's like, I don't want you just to. Start over and over again, looking for a new diet, thinking that something is wrong with you. Right. And not with the dieting mentality as such. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it brings us back to the the self-awareness and really understanding the motivation for the foods. Like I have three other podcasts today, so like consecutively. And so what I've done is I have a bowl of nuts and a couple craisins, and then I have another bowl with carrots and celery. And then I have a couple pieces of chocolate and a liter of water. So it's like, I want to make sure that like, when I get hungry, I'm going to have something that's healthy. I'm probably, odds are strong. I'm not going to really eat much of it, but the fact that I have it there keeps me from yeah, having yeah. to be in that state where, oh, I'm taken care of. And so I don't have to like have that oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. I have to eat something. And that something is something easily already made or something. And then I'm going to eat something bad. It's like, no, I actually took the time to make this to ensure that I know I'm taken care of. Well done. Planning is one of the key. Mm -hmm. Is, you know, I teach people who are working with me to, to plan. You know, if you don't have time and you're too busy to plan for the whole week, mm -hmm. just have, you know, two days ahead. Mm -hmm. And then you have a plan. You not you're not going to oh what am I going to eat next? Blah, blah, blah. You know all that kind of uh, thinking that doesn't leave you when you don't know. When you know, right. you're not obsessed about it. I have a plan. This is what I'm going to eat. And any time that your brain goes like, mm, how about it? Well, no, because we have a plan. So you check. You can just relax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we know what's going to be next meal, and you know it's it's training the mind. And then when you have that like that. It's not obsession about food anymore. Right, right. I, I've noticed that um, the times that I don't meal plan, I get into ruts and then I get sick Most of the ruts. Things. And so yeah. it's like, okay, so what do I need to do to shift that? So I'm constantly um, meeting those flavor needs. And one of the things I recently noticed is that I don't have nearly enough condiments and sauces. I'm like okay so that gets to be something i get when i'm when i'm able to move we have an ice storm right now so um 
can't leave, but like I have on the list, I'm like, I need rice wine. Oh, you know, white rice vinegar. And I need like the Thai red chili paste and like all these little things to like make it interesting for me. Um, because I know that I get really easily bored with the same food. Yeah. Yeah. Flavors, you know, using spices, mm -hmm. it's a really good thing. And then you make your own stuff. You know, when you have olive oil, some spices, uh, you know, you can easily make different flavors with the same ingredients, basically. Right. So it, it's playing with that, mm -hmm. experimenting with food. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, I have one final question, and that is how can people find you? Oh, okay. Well, I have two websites. One is uh, sugarfreelife.co.uk. And the other one is Green Mindful Keto. And, you know, Green Mindful Keto is more for people who wants to go into, into keto because, you know, it's quite popular. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the program that I told you about is called uh, Sugar Free in 28 Days. And people could buy that on its own. And it's just £97. So I'm quite... Uh, good with prices I don't want to be expensive because mm -hmm. I want to share what I know with as many people as possible mm -hmm. and and in case that people if they want to work it with me so one month with me with a course for life is just 250 pounds so it's Beautiful. it's quite reasonable yeah you know, really uh, I'm really passionate about sharing all of that and making people understand that it doesn't have to be a hard work Mm -hmm. And actually it's not, it's for two weeks of hard work. And after that, it gets so much easier. Yeah. And then, you know, when you feel so powerful, I'm feeling good. Usually when you go to diet, you, you're good at the beginning and then you start feeling worse and like, oh, you know, horrible. Mm -hmm. With the way I'm working about that is you, it's a hard work at the beginning because you're letting go of sugar, you, you have headaches and you feel, you know, lousy and mm -hmm. you don't want, blah, blah, blah. you know, all of those withdrawal symptoms. But five days later, that's gone. Right. And after that, you're just going up and feeling mm. better and powerful. And it's such a good thing to, you know, come to the point like, I don't care about all that stuff that I couldn't let go of before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's it's really powerful feeling. Mm. And because I love to hear that and see that with people, I really don't want to put my prices up because I wanted, you know, more people to know and understand. Right. Mm. Thank you so much for your time and your work in the world. And I, I'm just so grateful that you're on the planet with me and that you're doing this beautiful work. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I really, really enjoyed talking to you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And keep doing what you're doing because it's obviously wonderful work that you're doing. Thank you.